Hello, welcome to looking at this book, U.S. Assassin. Uh, we're going to do this just real quick, and I'm doing it, or briefly, I should say, and I'm doing it live. Let's see, I had like one person waiting for me, because he's a friend, and let's see if he's aware. Now nah, he's probably still watching Zach, but I'll just keep going. Uh, so this came with the Graveyard Shift books. It's written by Mark Poulton, who also wrote the Graveyard Shift books, and uh, let's see. So I put this thing down to listen to, or sorry, to watch it, and I tr or, ugh, to read it, and I tried reading it using um, this CD for whatever reason. It was just at the top of my stack. Uh, that's the soundtrack to Justice League Dark, a cartoon. Um, I sometimes I don't get all the cartoons, but I just get the music at times. Um, it's by Robert J. Crowell. Robert J. Crowell does a good job, but this was a mistake on my part in terms of the, the two don't match. The, sometimes they usually they go along really well, whatever soundtrack I pick and just reading a book. But this one, this one was on me. That was just I should have thought that through. So uh this book is let's see, Mark Bolton and Mike McMahon. I think this is McMahon's artwork, of course, on the front, as you might see. And McMahon did the pencils. So we gotta look at that in the credits here. Uh, he, but he, Tom, Corey, and Greg all did the inking and the artwork. My first inclination towards inconsistency in the artwork was on the third page here, but Poulton's that this is good, but it's a different style. It's the first thing I noticed when I, I turned the page, um, from one side to the other, even though these may have been inked by the same person. So all the pencils are, are uh, Mike McMahon, and they're great. They're fine. It's I think the there's a, the inconsistency in inking made the artwork suffer just a little bit, and then um, some of it was attention was given to uh, I can't find a good example page, but let's say attention was given to one panel on a page, but then the others got a little bit less attention. Th and that's not a always a bad thing. So you can tell that there was prioritization about what's important. Um, and that was a panel, I think, back here a bit. I have to do this upside down, so backwards is forwards and all that. A lot of angry faces. As you can see, here's the panel. So we got some good attention in this guy, but you could tell that a little bit less attention. Of course, this is a distant shot right there, so it's going to get less attention, less detailed because you're in the distance. Um, the Probably the real, anything that really made the artwork suffer was different inkers, not the inking itself. So uh, that would be... That would be that. Now, get my bearings straight. I did like the writing. Poulton's a good writer, but he used a lot of what to, what I would call tropes. I don't know if they're officially tropes. Uh, he drops us into the story straight away into the action. So we get a situation in a place I can't read because I'm doing this upside down. And it's at a palace in Pac Pacani, or the Pacani Palace. We're introduced to our first character straight away. There's action. Uh, he's infiltrating. We don't exactly know why, but we do find out why, or sorry, we are given at the beginning that a terrorist group has taken over the palace. So we're led to believe he's infiltrating because he's one of the good guys. Of course, we're not being misled. That's true. Look that up for you. Um, and it brings us, one. Uh, we can see in these first few pages, there's a page I can't show, but yeah, we can see in these first few pages, one of Mark's skills is getting you to know the character without having to tell you everything about the character. It's very good at, at show, don't tell. So I guess he's thinking about that or has practice that we can see in the character's thoughts more about his personality and what he, you know, what he values, how he thinks than just what's being said in his thoughts. Now the thought balloons in this do, do double function as a narration. So when they're in this blue with yellow lettering by uh, Eric Weathers, these, these are his thoughts that um, we're privy to. Uh, he goes, he infiltrates this palace. Let me turn the page carefully. Uh, one, There's one little weird thing in the writing. And so I noticed there are tropes, but that's not the weird thing. Uh, here, he's infiltrated the palace. It's quite noisy. And on the next page, it wakes up whoever's heading up the terrorist group. I need a, need a backer board. Oh, there's a backer board when you need one. Okay, I'll, I'll borrow this one. There we go. I don't want to show that page. It's uh, uh, women. It's got some nudity on it, but what's funny is the women don't have nipples. So it's like, it's nudity, but it's PG-13 because there's no nipples. <laughs> anyway, uh, probably just a good safety safety decision made there. Um, after he deals with the head of the terrorist organization, he rides out and you can see these these guys lining the street 
And so it makes me wonder why at the beginning was he able to sneak in and they didn't know he was coming or no wait, maybe he just works that quietly. Got it. Okay. So my confusion, he just works that quietly that apparently they may, might not have even gotten a shot off. Uh, so that's his job. And he radios home to proclaim victory. This is the guy. Uh, we're introduced to a doctor at home who recommends that he gets out of whatever military para whatever he's doing and go with a substitute for Blackwater called um, Project Black Storm and says, hey, check these guys out. They might be more in line with your with your line of work. Now, what's really funny about this is uh, we always draw uh, superheroes to be really, uh, what do you call it, um, aspirational. This is not an aspirational hero. He's more cautionary, but not cathartic. Now, this, this, what's funny about this is, uh, see the big arm there? I know people like this, and they do not use steroids. I've wrestled dudes like this. And it's it's funny. I was training with one guy in jujitsu, and I had to, the angle would be like from here, so I have to get on that arm. I had to, you know, get my hand around this way for that, that, that thumb in your hand grip. And so he'd gotten like bigger over the year that we were training together and he actually developed that divot in there. So this is, this is actually realistic instead of super idealized. Um, and yeah, when you wrestle guys like that, some, you have to change your grips a bit because you know, the handles don't fit anymore. Um, getting around it to the elbow is easy too. So the other the one thing I noticed here, flipping page here, we're going from one scene to the next. And this might've been where the anchors all changed is from one scene to the next. I don't know for sure. Uh, but what I do see in the, we're back into the writing again, is he's really letting us see the man's character. Oh, I had names. Where did I write them down? Our main character is Joe Knight. He, we're, so we're really seeing Joe Knight's character. He is a family man. He doesn't want, as he tells in very little dialogue on the previous page, tells the doctor he really doesn't want his family affected by what he does so they don't know the details of his job etc um and then he sent to we're not going to go through the whole book by the way he sent over to blackstorm and in meeting uh taylor maxwell the head of blackstorm uh he's introduced to richard Govman. i think i i think i wrote that down wrong and it's upside down to me now uh, he's introduced to these guys and i thought that we're going to get into a bit of a pissing match where it's the new guy over here in green being introduced to the guy who's been around for a while. Oh, you got to prove me to yourself. No, it's very simple. He just says, Hey, go ahead. And, and I've heard of you. This is great. You're here. They get introduced to the rest of the team. And that's where this dude with snakes first tongue <laughs> so, <laughs> slither. Um, he makes the mistake of saying, you don't look so special to me. So here's the stereo that, you know, the typical trope of bravado in an action film. Uh, that caught me in the writing of now we're okay. Now we're getting into more tropes. Um, and why, you know, why bother using that And his reaction of course, is to punch back just like every action movie. So, all right. Um, you, this, this isn't inconsistent with his character. He's proving himself, etc. but he's also kind of making enemies if you know what I mean. Um, but this is, th th this is an intro to the next trope that I'll bring up. So if we didn't have this, would we have a story? would you know what what would set up between the characters uh these guys he's supposed to train them and then they all go on a mission which happens to be back in the uh, land where he came from something happens on the mission where they kill an innocent child um so a little oops yeah maybe i shouldn't have gone that far maybe that's too much of a spoiler but this is the divide now i like what polton's doing here with and the, but this is really as far as i'll go um what Poulton's doing here with setting up the division in morality between Joe and uh, Gorman. Uh, that's not, G yeah, it's not government Gorman. Can't read my own writing in terms of these guys have no morals on the team that he's joined and our hero, Joe has morals. So we're moving a bit towards aspirational, but he announces I'm leaving. He leaves very loudly and that sets up, um, more of the story whereas if he led uh, left less emotionally less loudly would we even have a story but that's another trope there common to action films is if this guy didn't do something if our hero didn't do something stupid would our villains be inspired to attack the same way so um oh i got people here judging me silently Al albino thunderbones is on the wrong live stream he was looking for yeah something else thank you albino love you too <laughs> so, all right so into the writing 
Um, I don't think there's a problem with tropes. It is an, an action book. Uh, and I believe one of the things, if you have certain flaws to your hero, like his emotional reaction that then sets up more of the plot, that's one of the reasons comics are good for you know teenage guys from 11 or 10 to 15 is to show characters who uh, react badly and that there are consequences and then he has to live out the consequences. Um, this does become you know, a little bit, I want to say it's not predictable, but I'm giving you the parts that I predicted because I was trying. So, hey, he trains these guys. He says they're not ready yet. Are they going to become his enemy? That's what went through my head. So uh, what's his name? Poulton didn't make it predictable, but I was trying. And so I had to think, well, hmm, here's 20 things that could happen. And, you know, you get 20 guesses, you're going to guess right. So I'm not, not brilliant. So the artwork does sustain like it's there. It's not Ethan Van Skyver. It's not... Um, Kyle Ritter. It's not, uh, oh, who's the other guy I love? Uh, Art to bear, but it does get you through the story. If I were awake all the way, I would have had an easier time tracking between these, these two guys. <laughs> so they have similar chins. <laughs> so that threw me And Anyway, it's, it's the, you know, standard manly chin. Uh, anyway, this is the, uh, where the Poulton's writing shown was giving you character without laying everything out for you. I thought that was good. You get a good grasp of who's who. He does his setup, and the tropes are actually useful. He's using them for a reason. And then this whole book functions as an introduction to uh, what can carry on um, by the end with a new villain, if need be. But here are some pinups at the back. So definitely recommend, otherwise I wouldn't be reviewing it. Uh, I encourage Poulton and McMahon to work together again. This is good stuff. Again, the inking threw me, but that, then again, they had four inkers. That might have been it. So thanks for checking this out. I'm going to see if there's anything in the chat other than judging me silently. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> and uh, no, that's it. So I'm done. You guys have a good day. Take care. Link is in the chat, or link is in the description. There. <laughs>